I have so much to do in the next two days. Not sure how I'm gonna get it done, but I'm gonna give it um, my best effort. I have a list here that I thought that I would share with you because it's a little daunting and I feel like if I tell somebody else, then maybe you all can share in the, the, the bit of stress that I'm feeling. So I divvied up the tasks by like what they are. So I have a lot of sewing to do. So on my list to sew, I have purple basil. And I wanna sew purple basil uh, because I want to interplant that purple basil with my native plant bottle gentian so that I can see if it will, the smell of the basil will deter the deer. And um, as I think you probably know, I have tons of different types of basil seeds, but I specifically wanna use the purple because the uh, leaves of the bottle gentian are just this really beautiful standard green color um, and I think that the purple will the purple leaves of the purple basil will really set um, set off that look okay so that's the basil um, Kajari melons I behind me here I don't know if you can see my trellises I direct sowed some Kajari melon seeds you know, I really never have a lot of good luck direct sowing seeds. I'm not really sure why. But, <laughs> but anyways, what I want to do is I want to sow some Kajari melon seeds in my little um, bootstrap farmer. I think they're two, two inch pots, maybe three inch pots. So um, I'll do that. I found when I was in Virginia Beach visiting um, family and doing some college tours with my daughter, I found gourd seeds so i want to sow some gourd seeds um, these are the ones these are the gourds that and i'm not really <laughs> sure if there's multiple types of gourds or not but these are the gourds that um, will have will produce the fruit that will make those bird houses and so i want to put a lot more um, bird house habitats around our habitat around the yard so I was really excited about those. And then rosemary. I bought some rosemary seeds. I also bought some rosemary plants. Um, I want to put the rosemary in some of the drier areas and see if I can get it to take off a little bit. So like the basil, so like with the basil, I'm hoping that the rosemary will, if I plant the rosemary close to some of my natives that are in drier conditions, that it will maybe keep deter the deer a little bit as well swallowtail fennel I love swallowtails so I think I want so I think I want to sow some of those seeds and put them out actually in more of the native plant gardens because I have tons of swallowtails and um, yeah uh, dill same reason zinnias I want to sow a whole new set of zinnias because the zinnias that I sowed really early I sow my plants really really early and the reason I do that is not a good one it's just because um, it's the winter and I can't take it anymore and <laughs> I want a garden and so I sowed them really really early and I sowed a lot of them so I didn't feel like potting them up and then I am uh, also am really lazy about hardening off my plants so it's pretty much like best of luck to you when I, <laughs> when I put them out and I'll only bring them in like if it's gonna be a frost and then I tried to put a little bit of different kind of fertilizer on and I think it burned them a little bit. So, you know, they don't look their best. Um, but I'm gonna plant the ones out today behind me and then I'm gonna sew up some more to replace those if these ones um, that I plant in the garden beds do not take off. So those are the zinnias. Zinnias, zinnias. Oh, um, so I somehow I accidentally bought Jerusalem, Jerusalem artichoke tubers and root, root cuttings. I don't know how I did that, but I did. So anyway, um, I have, I received the, the root cuttings yesterday and I've been soaking them in water overnight. So I just want to uh, put those um, in some soil and um, let them grow a little bit in a controlled environment. And then I wanna sow, uh, pumpkin I have Jack B little pumpkin seeds and then honey honey nut honey bear squash anyway I wanted to sow those I think one or both of those they say not to not to or to only sow directly 
but like I said, I like am horrible at getting things to germinate when I don't sew them directly. It's so stupid, <laughs> but it just is what it is. So I'm gonna just give it, you know, a try. Okay, so that's on my list of things to sew. Now I have a list of things that I wanna move around the yard. Okay, first step is switchgrass. I think I've shown you this before, but in my front yard, I have switchgrass around a lemon nine bark and it's in the fall it's getting a little bit too big for that area so i just want to move it back a couple feet i have some swamp rose mallow that i planted there and so i kind of want to mix in the switchgrass um, just for the looks and also to maybe sturdy up the swamp rose mallow in that spot okay so then on the other side of me, on the other side of the camera, I have my corner uh, native plant bed and I um, moved a button bush to the back corner. I have Joe Pie weed and wing stem back there and I think I want to try this year without those guys and so oh, cardinals everywhere. Because the Joe Pie and the wing stem are finally starting to emerge, I want to uh, dig those up and I want to put those in the native plant hedgerow. Last year when I was trying to plant up um, a native plant hedgerow at my parents house I realized that they have these really awesome black raspberries. I'll put the name up on the screen but they have this really glaucous stem. It's so cool. It's almost like it has a dust over it and the stem is like purple so it makes it a bluish. They're really neat. Anyway I took a bunch of cuttings while I was out at their house and I planted them over there. I don't I don't even know if I'm pointing at the right place along the fence line of the cutting garden and I want to move those to the hedgerow on the side of the yard uh, in between some of the non-native azaleas. Okay and the things that I need to pot up. Herbs. I have these little Bootstrap Farmer 5x5 five five, um, seed flat seed trays seed trays and i and i have a bunch of them that have herbs like basil and holy basil and chamomile and oregano and marjoram anyway i need to pot those up into three inch pots and get them growing they're, they're not growing anymore because they're crowded um i have woodland sunflowers in it will, in those same types of trays, I have woodland sun, sunflowers, prairie sun drops, uh, mountain mints, um, a bunch of different um, native plants, little seedlings that I need to pot up as well. And I can see that some are actually dying because they've been in there too long, so I need to pot those up in three inch pots. And then my vegetables. Okay, so I need to put together some soil, probably the leaf grow compost and a bunch of perlite. I don't know, we'll see what I get around to doing. And I need to get my 10 gallon grow bags and transplant over my cucumbers. I don't think we're gonna have any more frost. There's one day this week where it's gonna get down to like 35, but I, I'll just cover the cucumbers. I'm not gonna do the tomatoes just yet. I might get the grow bags ready for the tomatoes, but I don't think I'm gonna do the tomatoes just yet because I can easily move them in and out of the garden um, in, in their um, bootstrap farmer trays. So I'll just probably wait till next weekend to do the tomatoes. Okay, so then I have to um, transplant the Jeru Jerusalem artichoke tubers that I bought into 10 gallon grow bags. I'm, I got the Jerusalem, Jerusalem artichoke tubers about a month ago. I put them in pots and now the green is starting to emerge. So they're ready to go into their 10 gallon pots. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew different um, beans in each one so that the beans can climb up the Jerusalem artichoke plants. And the beans that I have are tricolor bush beans, gold, purple, and green. Be pole runner beans, scarlet emperor. and then Kentucky Wonder. 
So it's kind of like a little bit of a three sisters thing, but with only two, <laughs> only two sisters. So again, the beans will grow up the stalks of the Jerusalem artichokes. The Jerusalem artichokes I'm growing for the tubers because they are um, edible and apparently they taste like raw. They taste like, um, what's that called? Water chestnuts. And then you can do all sorts of things um, with the cook them and make them into soup and all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to look at more into that. And then the way you harvest them is you don't harvest them like potatoes where, where you pull them out and then you put them and you store them in a cool, dry place. Uh, Jerusalem artichokes don't store well. So that's another reason why I'm growing them in grow bags is because when I'm ready for a batch of the Jerusalem artichokes in the winter, I can just come out and harvest it, harvest the, the tubers from the bag. So that's what I plan to do with the Jerusalem artichokes. And I'm not plant, they're native plants, actually, something else I forgot to mention, part of like the native plant agriculture thing that I'm trying to do here, but they're native plants. And so that's another reason why I'm planting them and they are extremely aggressive plants. So another reason why I'm growing them in grow bags and not out in my landscape and in my native plant um, garden bed. Okay, and then a couple things, a couple things on the list that I have to, to just plant that are ready to plant out in gardens or garden beds are my purple hyacinth bean vines. I want to, I planted some in these corner beds to either side of me the other day so that they'll come up on this fence and um, grow around. And then I wanted to put some around my deck, like in the ground um, and see if they do okay. They probably will hate the soil um, because some of these like cultivated plants or whatever, they don't like my Virginia clay. But a lot of my soil is pretty good though because I've let leaves and things like that decompose and put down wood chips so we'll we'll see what happens um, so i need to plant those out and then also behind me in the raised beds i have the um, struggling um, struggling zinnias which need to be planted and the reason why i am sowing more zinnias and then cosmos those are fine i'm going to put those out i have a bunch of natives that need to be planted out in the native plant garden beds and then dahlias. I got my order from Swan Island dahlias uh, yesterday or the day before. So excited. So I started to get those organized. They are going to go. Um, maybe I'll put a thing up on the screen, but I have a plan of where all the dahlias are going to go. Some of them I might have to pot up because the tulips behind me are still blooming. They're on their way out, but um, I just like am so resistant to remove any of the color so we'll see what i end up doing but um, for straight back for the red orange and yellow beds i may just pot those up for um, for the next week or so until i can get in there and put those tubers those tubers down and if you've been following along about how i rolled the dice with the, my dahlia tubers from last year where i put those five gallon buckets i just threw them into the garage and covered them with moving blankets and and they did super well and then over here to the right of me um i just left a bunch of dahlia tubers in the ground and i can see that they're all coming up so i have to remove those because they i actually thought they were going to die um, so i have to remove those and figure out what i'm going to do with them because i have a whole plan for that part of the bed okay so that's the dahlias um, and just some miscellaneous items I have to do. I have like a lot of my containers and um, buckets and all that kind of stuff that have plants in them. I like to mulch those with wood chips because it really does a fantastic, fantastic job of keeping the moisture in. And I have a bunch of new um, big pots and buckets that could really use that. And then I talked about removing the dahlias. Oh, and then actually the, the dahlias in my five gallon buckets need to go along the side here of my cutting garden in rainbow order. And, and then I just generally have to clean like all the mess I'm gonna make today. I actually put that on here. Usually I try and get my husband or my daughter to do that for me because I'm so exhausted by the end of the day, but we'll see what happens. And oh, and then the 
the last thing I wanted to make sure and do today is I'm meeting up with some garden friends tonight and I want to bring them a bunch of plants like um, some golden Alexanders and I have um, I have tons of plants that I grew from seed last year that I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with so like I have tons of button bush seedlings and um, shrubby St. John's wort seedlings and just some like random things that I propagated and that I don't really need so um, I want to uh, pass those on to some of my gardening friends and yeah so that's it for today and tomorrow so we'll see how much I get done hopefully um, hopefully I get enough done that I will actually want to update you tomorrow um, so anyway I think that's it for now yeah I got I, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to walk to go see my garden friends this evening my, my oh, it's this is a lot you know I'm sitting here thinking there's a ton of other there are a ton of other things that didn't make it on this list but if they didn't make it on this list they must not have been imp as important as these things so oh I, I almost forgot one of the biggest things that I want to get accomplished this week the thing that's gonna take the most work that I am really excited about because um, it'll look good is I finally was able to get a couple of my friends to come over and move one of those frames where I keep my native plants where I um, like overwinter them I winter sow them and so I decided I only wanted to move one I wanted to keep the sunny one up here I wanted to keep one up here for the sunny natives especially because they need to be watered more and then that still with the one there um, I still have access to the side so that's um, where I'm going to put the cucumbers I'm going to see if like they can actually be deer resistant like some people say they might be so anyway so now I have access to that area another reason why I have to transplant the black raspberries because I want to use that area but anyway yeah so finally I got one of those frames moved and I'm so excited it kind of looks like a hot mess right now but um I want to get it all nice and tidy and edged and I'm not sure I have enough wood chips left so I'm probably gonna to have to order some chipdrop.com I got to order that anyway because I was only able to mulch like a third of my native plant paths with with what I have over there and then I've been saving some of it for mulching containers and things like that so at this point I'm just droning on and on and on about all the things that I have to get done and I think I'm actually just droning on because I don't want to get started like I literally actually I already got started this morning I came out and I moved all of the shady natives down to where my frame was moved and then I moved over all the sunny ones to the the one that had the shade in it so and then I started moving plants around because I got to get them plant oh I didn't put on the list I, move, I have to plant out a bunch of steeple bush that I propagated last year. It's a lot. Okay, I'm, I'm really gonna go get this stuff done now. Okay, it's Sunday morning, and so I wanted to give you a little update on what I actually um, was able to accomplish yesterday. yesterday. I, I got a lot done, and then I went inside for lunch about one, and I fell asleep on the couch until four, so um, I didn't get nearly as much done yesterday that I wanted to, so here's uh, for doing trying again today. What did I get done yesterday? I was able to move the switchgrass, and I actually found two new stepping stones that I wanted for um, another area of my yard that was buried. I was able to get all the steeple bush planted up. I was, I'm back. My battery died when I tried to give my Sunday morning update. Um, so I think I maybe have gotten it all in. I don't know, I'll have to take a look at the video. But um, I was outside pretty much all day yesterday and I really haven't even made a dent in my to-do list. So a couple of the things that I did yesterday, I was able to get the gourd seeds sewed. I had to soak those overnight, so those are done now and i moved some wing stem i moved some wing stem on saturday but i still have some cuttings um 
to either give away or to plant up in the yard, I may just go ahead and throw those in the hedgerow and see how they do. I did not get to moving the black raspberries, the brunera, or the, oh, I did move some of the lyre leaf sage, so that was good. So as far as getting things potted up, um, I only got as far as getting the grow bags filled. So I have grow bags for Jeru Jerusalem artichokes, and I actually am gonna do those in five gallon um, grow bags because you don't harvest Jerusalem artichokes like you do potatoes. So you harvest them and then you use them. You don't harvest them and store them. So at first I was gonna put two plants in a 10 gallon grow bag and I thought it might be easier for use over the winter if I just go ahead and use individual five gallon grow bags. So those are done and I can actually um, go ahead and plant those this week and put them here in the cutting garden. As far as potting things up, um, I still have to pot, put, um, pot up the root cuttings of the Jeru Jerusalem artichokes and put those in, in little pots. I got all the steeple bush planted that I wanted to. I put the um, celery and the coriander back in the uh, back cutting garden bed, this uh, four by 12 bed. And I have the celery on one side and the coriander on the other so I don't um, get them confused. And I put those um, there in the back of the back bed because they can or probably want a little more shade than um, what I get in this cutting garden. So more of just like inner plant planting my ornamentals with my edibles. I didn't get anything done with my dahlias. I'd like to get my cosmos pot, my cosmos and my zinnias planted in the cutting garden this morning. Hopefully I can get that done this morning. I think I have a little bit of time. Um, I did mulch some of my containers on the deck and I mulched all of the dahlia containers and I found that mulching those containers helped so much to retain moisture. I really barely had to water my dahlias last year, maybe a handful of times, but using the wood chip mulch on the dahlias was really, really key. And so I did that also um, on most of the containers on my deck. Um, I just didn't do, there are just a couple left where I ran out of um, wood chips and moved on to the next task. I still have a mess in the yard to clean up and I have not moved some of the briars that I wanted to move. So anyway, it was actually a glorious weekend. It was beautiful, the sun was out, I got to hang out with some of my gardening friends. Yesterday I was able to um, have a couple other friends come over and pick up plants, which I absolutely love giving away my plants, so that was a lot of fun. And um, I did get a lot of done, I think, I just had so much to do that to think that I was gonna get it all done in two days was a little unrealistic. But anyway, so I have a little time this morning before I get started with work, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and get those um, Cosmos and Zinnias put into these beds here um, in the cutting garden. And what else? Oh, get the Jerusalem artichokes in place. Also, the um, regular artichoke so the globe artichoke and the, I think it's called the imperial artichoke those are ready outside of the cutting garden I'm gonna try and grow those in my hopefully deer resistant um, edible section right outside the cutting garden so I can put those in too so just a couple little tasks that I want to get um, done this morning and yeah so so that's it I'll take you around and show you um, what I did do so yeah here is um, one place where I put my dahlias in this lineup and I just put them in order of rainbow order. So anyway, this is what I was talking about, about needing to get them, number one, here in the cutting garden in their summer location. They were in the garage all winter underneath a moving blanket and they obviously, as you can see, have done just fine. So I needed to get him, them here in the cutting garden and then I put the wood chips down as mulch to keep the soil nice and wet. I gave them a very thorough watering before I did that. So that has been checked off the list. 
Here are my grow bags for my Jerusalem artichokes. Again, they are in five gallon grow bags. And it was just a couple weeks ago that I put the tubers in these little pots and they're already doing so, so well. So this is where the wing stem was over in that corner behind the cage. So that's where I took it out. I think there's also some New York ironweed, but I'm not sure which it is. So I'm just gonna hold off on moving that. But you'll see over here, I didn't move the Joe Pye weed because I got some of it out and I'm gonna try and keep it contained to kind of like this semicircle. Here, let me back up. So like here's the button bush and then like this semicircle like try and keep the Joe Pye weed there and see if I can keep it looking good. What I did is I usually Chelsea chop the Joe Pye weed in, let's see, in May 15th. But what I did instead is all these little, I, all these little buds here, I pinched them already. And I'm gonna see if maybe that will try and control the height even more. So I will probably pinch them a couple a couple times as opposed to one Chelsea chop. Here's some of the wing stem cuttings from where I was just showing you the bigger um, batches of these I've already put in hedgerow. I'll take you over there in a second. Here on the deck I did get all these pots of basil mulched excuse the way the basil looked i didn't treat them very nicely getting them hardened off and i think i burned them a little bit with fertilizer organic fertilizer i was also able to mulch this flame azalea and these northern bush honeysuckles so i'll get the rest done later this week this actually is a black huckleberry they have been growing um, wild in my yard. This one I actually bought. Okay, over here in the hedgerow, the wildlife native plant hedgerow, this is where I put the big clumps of the wing stem. Let me see, I think they're doing fine. Yeah, they're, well, maybe they could use some water. Anyway, here's one clump and then Here's another clump and then the last clump is right here. So they seem to be doing just fine and I had limbed up some of the bigger trees in here this winter in hopes of giving this area some more sun. So hopefully we got um, enough sun now to support some of these plants. So there's a patch of elderberries. I can't remember if I showed you this, but my friends took out the bed there. So this is where the deer resistant, well, hopefully deer resistant part of the edible garden, the vegetable garden is gonna be. So um, I am going to extend the bed out here and edge. That's septic, come over here and then back in and then meet up down there with that bed. And then I'll put, I'll do that by putting cardboard down and then wood chips on top of it. And here's my, here are my artichokes. So this is the globe artichoke. And then this is the imperial star artichoke. And then there is Violet eating Carex blanda. I have all of my sun loving natives now in this bed where the shade ones were in this bed but i put that back you down to the shady frame meaning like all the natives that i winter sow or grow over the winter um are in the frame that i had moved down here so that they will not get the crazy amount of sun that they were getting up there so let me turn you around okay so here it is, right, let's see, bear with me. Okay, so right back there, there's like Virginia bluebells and then my um, Carolina allspice and um, spiderwort. I mean, some of these plants uh, like a little bit of sun or part sun, but 
up there is too much sun, so I think that they'll do better here. Um, but just a um, bunch of natives. And then over here, let's see, over here are the um, sedges and the woodland grasses. Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. I have a lot of things to do and obviously my to-do list is way bigger than I can accomplish in two days. So I'm gonna call this weekend a wrap and I'm just gonna have to do um, small little items throughout the week and then try and get back at it next weekend. I hope you enjoyed this vlog of absolute 100% randomness i guess it's just kind of the life of a gardener a weekend gardener in um, the middle of april so anyway thank you all for joining me and i will see you again next time